In this video, we will set up the tiny GTC together with TinyDot for ADAF measurements. Here we have the tiny GTC and time lap. The tiny GTC is set up to output 10 MHz, you can see it here, and the 10 MHz output is sent into the A port. Uh, the first bar, the yellow bar, is set up to measure frequency and uh, it's done with a gate time of 0.1 seconds to have a high data rate. Now we can set up time lap. We do that by hitting acquire and then acquire from counter in talk only mode. And the setting stop of time lap will appear. Let's zoom into the setting stop. We have to find the correct output port of the tiny GTC, in this case it's COM port 6, and we can select frequency output, we hit monitor, and we know that it's only one numeric field, we can set the sampling interval to 0.1, and we change the caption to frequency, so we know that what we have been looking at, and we go back to the full view, and we start the USB logging of the tiny GTC. Here I can see the frequency data appearing. So we have the sampling interval correct. Everything seems to be okay to start the measurement. Let's switch to frequency view. So the frequency is now being recorded over time. And we let this run for some time. We can also have a look at the ADEF because it's calculated while running and the graph appears nicely. All seems to be well. Let's run it for some more seconds so we have some data to look at. Okay, we're going to stop USB logging and we will have a look at the collected data. Um, we can look at the frequency view, but we can also look at the phase view. And the phase view is important because the ADF is being calculated from the phase. So time lap is converting the recorded frequency to phase. But as you can see, the phase changes over time. This should not happen, but that's due to a calculation problem. When time lap integrates the phase over time, the frequency over time into the phase, there are very small calculations errors being made and these accumulate over time and these can cause a drift of the phase. So it's better to measure the phase when trying to do an ADF measurement. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to change the setup of the tiny GTC to do phase measurement. Measure phase. We want the phase measured not in degrees but in time. Do it against the NCO of 10 MHz. So we have a nice stable recorded phase. We can unwrap the phase, but due to there's no rotation, so it's not needed, but it's good to have it. Then we can go back to time lap and we activate the acquisition. We click on monitor and we enable the output. And here we see the phase data arriving. So we select phase difference in time lab. Everything else is the same. And we record here that this is phase based data and we can start the measurement. And we see the measurement data arrive. As we are now measuring phase, the phase is stable and there is no accumulative error and we see continuously see the same phase being recorded. Let's look at the ADEF calculation and you can see that there is a difference. The angle of the drop is different and it's about one decade per decade time and it's about twice as fast compared to the frequency. This was due to the phase drift being recorded in the, uh, the frequency-based calculation. So for measuring true ADEF, it's better 
to use the phase based measurement. We can stop this measurement and we see if there's another possibility to do this ADEF measurement. To change the setting for the tiny GTC for that other way to measure the ADEF, we zoom in on the tiny GTC and select a different measurement method. We select measure time and timestamp. This will record the time uh, of the first pulse after the gate opens. And this is in kiloseconds since the start of the device. So these are the seconds and these starts the, are the 100 milliseconds. To get rid of this continuously increment, we go to the time menu and enable the time wrapping. As this is a 10 MHz input, we can set the time wrapping to 0.1 microseconds. And now you have a continuous value, so there's no increment anymore. And this can be used as input to time lab. Now we set up time lab, start the acquisition, and we monitor the data, start the output, get the timestamp here, and we can use here the input as phase. We could also use the time wrap, but phase also works. And we say time stamp, and we start the measurement. As you can see, the accuracy of the measurement using the timestamping is less compared to the frequency and phase based measurement. And this is due to the single measurement being used once per gate time of 100 milliseconds. So there's no statistical accuracy improvement. You can also see that when you look to the phase data, there's a bit more noise. We can hide here the uh, frequency based measurement and here, here you can see there is about 10 times more noise in the uh, time based measurement and the noise is about 40 picoseconds which makes sense based on the accuracy of the tiny GTC. We stop the measurement and we switch back to the uh, ADEF and we enable the frequency based value and here you have the data collected from the tiny GTC in three different ways to measure the ADEF using the tiny GTC. I hope this has given you some insight in how to set up the tiny GTC for measurements together with TimeLab.